This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 571, Waves of Acceptance, by Jesse Chaplin, and I'm your narrator, Justin Mollick. Happy 4th of July. If you're new here, this isn't a typical podcast. There aren't any interviews or criminal cases here. It's more like an audiobook than a podcast. I simply find the best content I can that I think will help you optimize your life. I get permission from the authors and then read it to you like an audiobook. It's that simple. And every few months-ish, I team up with Dr. Chris Patty at Appalachian State University and pick an essay or two to narrate from his class. It's so cool to me that students can participate in this podcast in that way. So a couple months ago, they finished their essays and he sent me over a few that the students voted on. And this one I'm gonna read to you in particular stood out to me. I'll talk about it a little more at the end. And I just wanna thank Dr. Chris Patty and Jesse, the author of this essay, for doing this. With that, let's hear her essay as we optimize your life. Waves of Acceptance by Jesse Chaplin. I suffer from anxiety, a term that fails to encompass the whole experience. This anxiety manifests itself in many ways, and a few years ago, it manifested as panic attacks. My freshman year of college, I would wake up at six in the morning to a feeling of absolute terror. I felt like I was having a heart attack and that I was going to die. My body shook, my left arm ached, my heart beat 110 beats per minute, my palms grew sweaty, and a heavy, invisible weight rested forcefully on my chest. I would ride these tumultuous waves of anxiety by calling my mom and trying to talk with her through it until finally a semblance of relief hit. These waves of anxiety surfaced during class, in the middle of the night, and any time I felt trapped. The increasing frequency of the attacks left me in a state of constant fear of the impending doom that shadowed each waking minute. I slowly started to isolate myself out of a fear of embarrassment, that I would have an attack around others, and that they wouldn't know how to deal with someone who had such strong anxiety. Finally, after months of feeling weighed down, stuck in a state of fear, not feeling any appreciation for life as it had become merely trying to evade the next attack, I sought medical help. After a trip to the ER where they ran all kinds of tests on my heart, the doctors confirmed the cause of all my physiological symptoms as quote unquote just anxiety a diagnosis that too failed to encompass the whole experience. The only help they offered was a medicine to mask the symptoms. I then began reading online about different anxiety disorders and diagnosed myself as having panic disorder, which basically is a strong word that means your sympathetic nervous system or fight or flight response constantly tells you that you are in a life-threatening situation. I approached my father about getting professional help and he responded with familiar language. You just need a stronger relationship with God. He couldn't understand as no one can until they've experienced a panic attack themselves. One day during Christmas break, I rode home with him and my brother after visiting family in Johnson City, Tennessee. An attack struck and I cried my eyes out, begging them to take me to the hospital. In that moment, they witnessed the severity of what I was dealing with. This panic disorder was bigger than me and bigger than anything I had ever dealt with. I couldn't pray it away, nor could I avoid it. I simply had to ride out the feeling when it came. As months went by, I researched all the habits that can decrease anxiety. I read online about how changing your diet, cutting out caffeine, exercising, and sleeping better could help, and all of these things I worked to implement. I also finally went to a counselor who helped me understand how my need for control contributed to this overwhelming anxiety, which led me to try and accept what little control I actually have. Despite trying all that, I also decided that I wanted to deal with my intense fear of change, which I felt had triggered the onset of the disorder. I chose to take a bunch of risks, at least they were risks to me. I got a scary new job, I took a class I just wanted to take for fun, I joined a bunch of clubs, and I began to put myself in situations that would bring on my paralyzing fear. It's ironic that to decrease my anxiety, I had to first increase it. I think that just shows how beautifully complex humans are. As Pema Chodron says in her book, When Things Fall Apart, We have to move closer to fear to learn how to embrace it. Since I've been putting myself in these situations, I've begun to feel a sense of agency. I have the choice of what to throw myself into. Today, I still have anxiety and I probably always will. My brain runs through all these situations, overanalyzing everything. I'm still learning how to rein myself in and be mindful of how those patterns of thinking contribute to my fears and need for control. I still have panic attacks, but I've become much more familiar with them, and through them, 
I've learned the importance of embracing change. It seems simple, but I think we hold on to the ways things are a lot more tightly than we realize. As much as it can be boring, we do like a sense of routine and a sense of normalcy. By challenging myself to move out of my comfort zone into situations that take the floor out from under my feet, I've become much more acquainted with the anxiety that now sits in the background of my life. I'm making friends with my anxiety. Every now and then, it will move to the center, demanding attention, but I see it more now as a sign of waking up, of realizing the parts of my subconscious that still feel afraid. We all have our own fears and anxieties. I think, if anything, we can learn how to embrace them, become familiar with them, and realize that they are a chance for us to wake up and listen to ourselves. When a panic attack hits now, a rarer occurrence, I try to remember the famous advice of medical scientist John Kabat-Zinn that we only have moments in which to live. In this moment, I may feel the weight of anxiety hit, leaving me grasping for breath, and in the next, I may feel the soft, tender relief that arises after. I've learned to accept each moment for what it is. Sometimes waves crash and sometimes waves gently approach the shore, but the beauty lies in appreciating how quickly they come and how quickly they go. You just listened to the post titled Waves of Acceptance by Jesse Chaplin. This definitely hit home for me, also having major bouts of panic. Mine is more performance-based, and some might think, oh, that's just stage fright, everyone gets it, you're fine. But those people haven't actually seen me in full-blown panic, nor would I ever want them to, and that is why I desperately avoid those situations. It's truly embarrassing, and frustrating, and exhausting, and the more I run away from it, the worse it gets. Truly, the only thing I can do is confront it and be okay with the results, to be okay with the panic, with myself, and with however anyone responds to it. It's easier said than done, but I think Jessie has some wisdom that's way ahead of the game, which is great. Especially that line about how she had to increase her anxiety first to decrease it. It took me years of panic to have that kind of outlook. But even then, I'm still struggling and running away at times. I just hope I can have the courage that she has to stand up to it here and there and confront it head on, almost asking for the panic to show its face because it's times like those that it backs down. And this applies to any kind of anxiety, really. I wasn't just narrating this for selfish reasons. If you get anxious when, I don't know, when things don't go the way you planned, or if your home is dirty, or if there's clutter or money troubles, four words, this too shall pass. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you again to Dr. Chris Patty and Jesse Chaplin from Appalachian State University. Thank you for listening. This essay is posted on the blog at oldpodcast.com. The shortcut link to it is oldpodcast.com slash panic. And you can comment there if you want to. Have a happy 4th of July if you're here in the US. Have a safe one. And I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.